All right. Here we are in the afternoon session. Uh, I want to thank the organizers and Hartmut uh, for inviting me in this extraordinary symposium. Uh, I have watched some of the talks and uh, they are all outstanding and there's a lot to learn. So let's start a la grande here. The picture uh, I'm showing you is from N Body Shop of uh, uh, the simulations of the universe, where you see uh, all the lighted parts are baryonic matter and galaxies and uh, the normal matter. And all the black filaments you see there are the depiction of the scaffolding of the universe, namely dark matter. And why am I showing this? Is this because we think that uh, dark matter that we have observed only gravitationally in the experiment uh, in the cosmos has something to do with quantum entanglement, in fact, long-range quantum entanglement. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't, uh, there is no quantum talk uh, that is of the type of inspiration that doesn't include also something about Feynman. Uh, many people think that Feynman could be, could be said that he's quantum information uh, grandfather, let's say, or father for that matter. And uh, you see him here. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that uh, Feynman was working for 10 cents an hour in one of his students' uh, startup company on parallel computing, uh, th threaded uh, parallel computing uh, architectures. There was Dan Hillis who made this company. These are the cubes on his shirt. So Feynman was very interested in, uh, in computing and computation in general and in quantum computing in particular, other than all his other uh, interests in physics at large. So he did say that uh, nature isn't classical. And if you want to make a simulation or an experiment, I would say of nature, you better make it quantum mechanical. And it's a wonderful problem because it doesn't look so easy. And we are being faced with this uh, at the advent of quantum information and for the past 20 years the, uh, that uh, quantum devices and quantum processing has evolved rapidly. Uh, the, in fact, it, it, it isn't very easy, but uh, if you look at it from the angle of the physics, of the big angle of physics, it's extremely rewarding to think about the problem and even more rewarding to actually... Uh, solve some or test or benchmark some physics and learn physics uh, through uh, quantum infrastructure, shall we say. So going back to the first slide, I showed you uh, a picture, a cosmological picture of the universe. Indeed, we think that our universe and nature is quantum and complex in its manifestation and its source. Of course, it has classicalized because we see classical objects, but uh, we see uh, a lot of the foundational aspects of the cosmos are indeed quantum and complex. And that includes empty space, the vacuum. And we think in the past 20 years, probably space time itself is connected in some non trivial way with uh, quantum and quantum entanglement uh, specifically. Uh, in fact, I want to uh, plug in here, we're having the high energy physics community, the el elementary particle physics community, together with astroparticle physics and cosmology. We have a meeting uh, this week uh, in Seattle for the long range planning of our field. And part of our core um, sort of interest is on uh, using quantum information science and technology to solve big problems in high energy physics. So uh, it's not just the Large Hadron Collider or other colliders, but we start as quantum information science and technology has evolved, we start um, uh, learning it better and understanding how to use it in our mission for uh, fundamental physics. And when I say the quantum vacuum uh, is indeed quantum and complex, here's a picture of the QCD quantum vacuum, a little simulation, and you see that uh, it is in fact bubbling, it is uh, 
full of activity, quantum activity. And uh, this is why we consider the vacuum uh, as a quantum and body quantum system uh, and state quantum system. The vacuum um, is, it, it, it's misleading to think that the vacuum is empty. In fact, if we draw the cosmological evolution of the universe, uh, usually the theorists put something here as quantum fluctuations and inflation, which we haven't proven it, it's a theory. But then something happens at 10 to the minus 11 seconds if we consider this some, some sort of a T0 of shorts. Uh, we have um, a symmetry breaking, the electroweak vacuum symmetry breaking, and uh, the universe materializes at that point. And the way we talk about this um, is as if we understand it completely, which of course we don't. Um, we uh, have a parameterized version of this in the standard model. And we have a mechanism called the Anderson-Higgs mechanism for electroweak symmetry breaking. And uh, what is this? This is a phase transition. It's a criticality. It's a critical phenomenon. A quantum uh, phase transition, in fact. You might have heard it in cosmology. We call it... Uh, uh, the uh, electroweak phase transition, and uh, we kind we, we kind of need to study this in a better way uh, as we understand better how to deal with critical phenomena and phase transitions in physics, and as we create more tools, uh, quantum technology tools. All right, again to illustrate at the very at the very large distance scales, we have gravity and we have the cosmos that we know and we see. The cosmos that we don't see is also there. It's 95% of it. It's a big part that we don't see. Uh, we call it dark energy and dark matter. It's gravitational. So we do think that if we make contact with gravity in a form that includes entanglement or quantum gravity or strings, where there's a lot of framework, a lot of mathematical framework, but uh, not, not testing point, shall we say. Uh, we think that we can connect it with the small scales. Here, is, these are particles, but in here we include layer by layer everything that comes below particles, possibly strings, possibly, um, possibly now it's only a framework, but uh, we, we want to understand the connection of this uh, physics of gravity and quantum mechanics. I, I want to remind ourselves also here that uh, computation has become part of the scientific method through and through in all science and in data intensive sciences, you can't, you can't escape it. We, simulation is giving us both uh, insight and is becoming a tool for discovery. And uh, the better we get in uh, computation, and here I'm, when, I'm, when I'm referring to computation, I don't know the computer scientists agree with me, but it's everything, software and hardware and the, the whole ecosystem of how we compute. And that includes mathematics, algorithms, everything. Um, and, uh, and computation uh, since the time of the transistors is based on quantum mechanics. The transistor is a, it's based on quantum mechanics, but it doesn't use entanglement. So the elevated version of computation is quantum computation, where we try to figure out how we can reap the so-called quantum advantage. And since this talk is about physics, I want to give examples of uh, some physics probes uh, using quantum processing. And uh, uh, it's, this crowd is, knows everything about that because uh, a lot of the published works have been uh, owing to the quantum processor that, uh, that Google has built. For example, there are many... Uh, milestone type of papers on, on physics and time crystals, topologically ordered states and chaotic systems. And the physics they probe is phase transitions, like I mentioned before. And I want to emphasize that in physics, phase transitions are, are difficult. In uh, condensed matter physics, people are thinking it more and they have worked more on it. 
in high energy physics and uh, physics of the universe, cosmology, etc., we are grappling with it. Uh, this type of works also probe symmetries, out of equilibrium dynamics, and uh, to criticality, criti critical points, which are uh, important and in the same realm as, as phase transitions. Criticality in my mind and quantum criticality, if we understand it uh, thoroughly, is the foundation also of, of, of uh, the, the universe we live in, of the space-time we live in. If we understand quantum criticality, we will get a lot of insight. All right, so now there's a bunch of fine Manesco words for the evolution of, uh, of how we uh, fold the quantum information science in fundamental physics. The Feynman-esque words first came from Feynman's advisor in 1989, namely John Wheeler, who said the uh, physical process derives its ultimate significance from information in bits, or else it from bit. In other words, everything is an information. So you think of the universe as the information universe. And uh, as we understand information in the form of quantum information, the logical continuation of this notion, which becomes more than a notion, it becomes physics, is it from qubit. In other words, universe is a quantum universe. And uh, Deutsch said uh, this uh, words, a physics process is an emergent phenomenon from the processing of quantum information. So, um, it's quite interesting that uh, this is being posed like that. And uh, interestingly so, we go from then from thinking of, of information to the geometry as well. And uh, this is, we're go I'm going to show you a little bit of a historical evolution of this uh, thinking where uh, GR or the Einstein, Rosen, when they started thinking about GR wormholes, for example, um, and the entanglement, this is the Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen uh, uh, work, they, people started thinking that this is not just different um, sides of the same type of physics, but it is the same uh, it is one side that is manifested or understood by us in a different way until we figure it out. And uh, this is work that started this decade, well, almost 10 years ago, by Saskin and Maldasena. And uh, the, it, it, the, the way to capture this in one sentence is the geometric phenomena in gravity can be fully described by entangled quantum systems. Which sound, it sounds like an axiom, but we still, we really do need to have some contact, some experimental contact with that. And uh, I will show you some ideas on how this can be realized. All right, I promised you history. So here is a century of history. We're talking about uh, 1935, when Einstein and Rosen proposed these bridges. Uh, uh, in space-time, known, known as Einstein-Rosen bridges. And then in uh, 1935, same year, uh, they, the, they talked about entanglement, quantum entanglement. Now I'm going to throw, go forward, forget to throw back here and go forward many decades in 1975, where Hawking in... in uh, working on the radiation from a black hole, um, he mentioned that if the radiation from a black hole is viewed by an observer near the horizon, it looks like pulses of negative energy. And I will tell you why this is important, um, because this will be the, the main idea of... Uh, making these wormholes in GR, which are non-traversable, traversable by introducing a quantum effect. These pulses of negative energy are introduced in Hawking's uh, uh, work as, as a quantum effect. Uh, and in fact, uh, the whole 
black hole information uh, sort of paradox or the firewalls, etc., that has been discussed in the past 10 years or 20 years, it has been solved using the language of uh, quantum entanglement very recently. Uh, so uh, just for fun, I wanted to mention that uh, to follow up on this, the wormhole, the, the, the GR wormhole of uh, Einstein Rosen, was was studied. Uh, one of my colleagues, Kip Thorne, had written a fun paper that said wormholes, time machines, and the weak energy condition in 1988, where he says that in one of his part of the paper, he actually says one can imagine an advanced civilization pulling a wormhole out of a quantum form and enlarging it to classical size. This might be analyzable by techniques now being developed for computation of spontaneous wormhole production by quantum tunneling. Now, Keep, as you know, he uh, helped Carl Sagan make this movie Contact, where uh, uh, the, the protagonist goes inside the wormhole, travels, etc. And uh, uh, I think it's quite impressive that when he imagined the advanced civilization of 1988. He's telling us where we will be today, uh, almost. So in the recent history, very dynamic recent history of developments in this area, uh, John Preskill and Patrick Hayden, they wrote a paper in 2007. I think Alice threw the book in the black hole and then Bob recovered it. It was a scrambling paper. Scrambled qubits into a system that is entangled with the reference can be actually recovered and with, with a few measurements. It was uh, also a milestone paper in the way we think uh, about uh, entanglement and information. And then in 2013, Juan Maldacena and Lenny Saskine, they speculated this ER equals ZPR, meaning that the wormholes in quantum gravity are a feature of a particular kind of quantum entanglement. Uh, not very long after, Alexei Kitaev, who talked to you, who talked about the codes this morning, uh, uh, a, 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 an amazing lecture in my mind, he also wrote down a quantum dynamical system called the SYK model. This is a this model is a two-dimensional model. It's a two-dimensional model, and it has a correspondence in the ADS2 CFT correspondence. It exhibits explicit holographic duality. In other words, it has quantum dynamics that look like quantum gravity effects in an emergent space. And uh, this SYK models, in fact, can be explicitly produced and observed as quantum systems on a quantum processor. So they gave us the first point of imagination of contact of doing quantum gravity experiments on, uh, on uh, the uh, tabletop quantum gravity experiments, or quantum gravity experiments in the lab uh, on a quantum computer. Many, many researchers, uh, Brian Swingle and others uh, have talked about this, and they have, including Lenny Saskine himself and, and Patrick and others have been thinking about that. Uh, you saw more recently in the Quanta magazine an article with all the with all the various players okay. on both quantum computing and on quantum information science and contact with string and quantum gravity on their thoughts about that. In 2016, Daniel Jefferies and his collaborators showed that adding a quantum effect, this negative pulse of energy, perhaps more than one, is on the SYK, is, can, you can create a, a protocol, a quantum teleportation protocol, unlike the normal ones, that make these wormholes traversable. And uh, these quantum effects gravitationally do look like a pulse of negative energy going into the wormhole. And uh, this, this, uh, the, this was the connecting with the previous uh, notion that I 
gave you from Hawking that he thought about that in the context of the quantum information on, of the information paradox for the, in the black hole. So in 2018, we the, the Department of Energy, uh, the High Energy Office in the Department of Energy, they started thinking about how to start doing some connection of fundamental physics with quantum information science and uh, with Jafferis and uh, some people from Fermilab and uh, some students would put together a uh, uh, quantum communication channels for fundamental physics proposal where we said we're going to do work along this line and we had a bunch of stuff that were more viable and more feasible and also the traversable wormhole. In fact, we had a, a Google letter that uh, we will collaborate on this and we started we started, and it wasn't only us, there's Patrick Hayden and the AMO people that put similar proposals for other systems and uh, other people, maybe not in the high energy physics, uh, in this particular high energy physics call, but other people started thinking really seriously on actually doing a quantum experiment in, uh, in these... Uh, on doing a quantum experiment in, uh, for, for these uh, particular uh, um, uh, models and, and trying to make a contact with quantum gravity. Uh, Maldacena, uh, in the same year, Maldacena and Qui described an internal traversable wormhole and they described how to prepare the thermal field dual state as the ground state of the Hamiltonian. So uh, string theory started thinking about the, these issues as well. And that's quite kind of important because these are the people that uh, will need to think if we create such a bridge or if we do such experiment, how then to, to uh, evolve it in, uh, uh, in, in the way the framework of string theory and gravity is, is, uh, is connected. And in 2019, Saskind showed that the holographic teleportation protocols exhibit an interference effect that is a signature of a signal traversing a geometric wormhole. They called it size winding uh, and the teleportation by size, which is a new characteristic, a new uh, way of describing uh, the, the, the emergent of space through a wormhole teleportation protocol, and a concrete signature for near term and longer term, I would say, uh, tabletop quantum gravity experiments. So, Chaferis and Gao, after that uh, that uh, paper, they proposed uh, exactly. They write down exactly this uh, traversable wormhole teleportation protocol, and uh, we did uh, actually together with some experimentalists and theorists, uh, we did a, a workshop in Aspen in 2000, in May 2019, uh, where uh, Jaffe, you see here Daniel Jaffe is describing these traversable wormholes to a group of uh, people that are, they were completely multidisciplinary. There were mathematicians, computer scientists, physicists, high energy physicists, condensed matter physicists, algorithmic people, machine learning people. So it was, uh, it was quite, uh, we were told it was premature to talk about these things, but we we had a lot of fun at this workshop and we learned a lot. And uh, then uh, the young people pushed a lot to, uh, to, to learn even more. All right. So I, uh, let, let me push a little bit more on this. Is uh, imagine imagine that we can actually do this. Imagine that we can write the circuit down. This is the left side of this is one this is the left this is one black hole. Let's say here in a space time diagram. This is one black hole. This is another black hole. Or this is one quantum computer and another quantum computer. You throw uh, you throw some information quantum information here and then you start pushing the negative energy uh, pulse, maybe one, maybe two, the message, is getting, uh, the message is getting kicked. And instead of being lost in some singularity up here, the message is going through, is getting on the other side, received, read out, and uh, you read it. And this is, 
in in this diagram, uh, this teleportation, the classical channel will be from the left to the right, and uh, uh, the Chaferis protocol. This is the way you uh, you write it in terms of uh, of the circuit, but uh, the way Chaferis and uh, and Gao wrote the protocol in in this way, uh, we could do it. Uh, one could imagine doing it on the SYK model where you have uh, on the one side uh, fermion, some Majorana fermions, on the other side some Majorana fermions inject the qubit and uh, get it out on the other side. So a lot of people, this is a new form of quantum teleportation, which is intrinsically many bodies. This is why you have the, the SYK two-dimensional model with then fermions. Um, it's intrinsically many body it comes from uh, a theoretical let's say co quantum system condensed matter many body quantum systems and you see here how many people have uh, have worked on it and uh, have used it and have uh, evolved it in some sense so it's 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 a it's a, a special quantum circuit so what can we do with that let's remind ourselves again the feynman esque war Words. So a physical process is an emergent phenomenon from the processing of quantum information, Dixit, Deutsch. So we can do uh, physics in the form of propagation of quantum information. And what can we probe? What, what can we do? We can do wormhole teleportation protocols. In other words, create wormhole dynamics on a quantum uh, processor. Uh, we can do scrambling of chaotic systems. We can do what is called peak size teleportation and many, many other uh, physics cases. And what kind of physics are we probing? We're probing stringy connections to gravity, uh, scrambling, thermalization, elastic, inelastic, the creation of uh, a bridge of space. Uh, we can do beyond classical behavior of information uh, we can dis we can describe phase transitions, criticality, and probe the physics of phase transitions and criticality. And I didn't tell you that the way we study phase transitions is is extremely important to uh, to understand in depth fundamental physics. So it's not only gravity and stringy effects, which is this one that I mentioned before, but uh, this. I, may, I have it here as an example, the peak uh, uh, size teleportation. So from the point of view of understanding and body systems, if you take a limit of the uh, gravitational of the system, of the quantum system, a limit that it is uh, the, the high temperature limit or the beta zero equals zero limit, so you have VPR pairs, you can start characterizing generic many body teleportation. So condensed matter physics becomes, for, for condensed matter physicists, this is becoming extremely uh, important. And so in the different, um, in the different limits of the different parameters of this particular circuit, you can do different kinds of physics. You can do strings and gravity, but also you can do condensed matter physics and do characterization of many body, of many body systems and uh, um, and uh, information and operator uh, 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 propagation and so on. All right, I want to remind here at this point, because I mentioned on the one side, quantum gravity, high energy. On the other side, I mentioned uh, condensed matter physics. I want to just uh, remind ourselves that the, the Higgs mechanism that I mentioned very early on, it, it, was, uh, it was written down uh, by Anderson. Uh, uh, and so we call it really the mechanism, the Anderson Higgs mechanism. And the relativistic application of that became the Higgs mechanism, the Higgs particle, and uh, the electroweak symmetry breaking that we have in the standard model, which is only a parametrization of, of, uh, of a, a Landau parametrization of a deeper, of something that we have to understand deeper in terms of uh, uh, phase transitions. Uh, so Higgs uh, modes in symmetry breaking, they're happening in condensed matter systems. My, my, my colleague at uh, Caltech and many others are seeing uh, Higgs modes of a, of a few hertz or hundreds of hertz. And uh, in 
uh, high energy physics, we have the Higgs the electro weak breaking mechanism and the Higgs particle uh, as a as a uh, a breaking mechanism of an n-body system, uh, which is the vacuum. The vacuum is an n-body system, if you think about it. So this uh, study of fundamental physics from all possible sides have been very useful, and uh, um, I wanted to remind ourselves from that. In addition to that, uh, um, there is a lot of work in the machine learning community and in the physics community, as they come together, that, uh, in fact, uh, learning can be thought of as a physical process and described from the perspective of physics. Um, in, the in the machine learning community, there's a lot of papers that they capture this. Learning is equivalent to coarse-graining dynamics that preserve relevant information. And so, going back to the phase transitions again, we can learn, uh, we can deduce the we can deduce the learning mechanism from the perspective of physics with uh, uh, phase transitions in terms of possibility of learning, in the complexity of learning, coarse grain of information in learning dynamics. And uh, again, being a high energy physicist, I want to remind ourselves we didn't need to know all the particles of the standard model to have the standard model, or we don't need to have 10 to the 120 pieces of information in order to deduce the physics of the universe. And also equilibrium and ground states in, in learning models. And uh, since our host is Google, I put a few papers here on, uh, uh, for example, quantum advantage in learning from experiments that was just dropped, I think, uh, where phase transition of complexity of learning in the size of quantum memories is uh, analyzed. And then uh, earlier in the year, there was untangling uh, quantum gen generative adversarial networks, in other words, quantum adversarial networks work, the stable equilibrium in adversarial learning dynamics of noisy quantum systems. And um, again, I want to remind us something here in, com in computing problems, when we say some problem is difficult, it's an NP problem. Usually this NP problem, you don't have to take the worst case scenario. Uh, you can study it and map it at the criticality, at the, at the critical point, and learn something about it. So criticality in physics can be a map to understand uh, uh, NP in computing. What else? So let's imagine. Let's imagine we solved some of the problems that, that were mentioned before. Let's imagine we solve the, the we or we have an experiment on this uh, 2D wormhole dynamics in uh, Alexei's model, and we make a, and we touch with quantum gravity. Uh, this is a toy model. What, what are we going to do after that? Well, we're going to have, somebody has to uh, think, what is the if we created an emergent space, what is this space? What is the curvature? How do we probe it? Do we throw another information backwards, forwards? What, how do we characterize and describe exactly this two-dimensional bridge? And then it's two-dimensional only. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, well, can we write a three-dimensional model that touches with quantum gravity? So the quantum information people and the string people and everybody who does n-body physics, uh, they will have to, to give us some 3D. That's not a difficult, that's not an easy thing to do. Um, it, it's quite difficult, but it will push people since we will have a point of contact already and we will have the quantum infrastructure to perform the first uh, uh, experimental demonstration will push people to think harder. And uh, if we do that, then we're going to push even harder because I think then we're going to start thinking instead of ADS correspondence, anti decider space is not the space of the universe. The cosmological constant is wrong there. So we have to start thinking on the sitter and then beyond boundaries. So uh, not easy, not even conceptually easy to 
to uh, wrap our minds around that. But imagine, imagine the progress that we'll have. And this imagine is captured a little bit in this, uh, I think this was a science uh, article that had this movie where you went into space-time and you went uh, deeper and deeper and you had the geometric view and you went deeper and deeper in space-time and you had uh, the atomic, the quantum view and you went deeper, deeper on that and you had, uh, I think this was tensor networks or... Uh, in the end, you ended up with space-time coming out of entanglement, which is what this is uh, going to finish uh, looking at here. So, so it's uh, it's. I think it's inspiring and capturing that we have tools today to start actually doing this type of of measurements. And I will close here. Oh, I'm a little delayed. I'm sorry. I will close here by showing you from the all the culture AI uh, series of Ian Banks. For those of you who uh, who liked all the AIs that are so intelligent, etc., there, there was one of them that says uh, Hurley's wrapped on the clear material separating them from the view of the dark battlefield. And he said, we are information, gentlemen, all things are. However, we are lucky enough to be encoded in matter itself. And I deleted some other stuff that that uh, that I, I thought that was capturing it very well. And I suggest for those of you that love quantum machine learning and uh, AI and uh, the universes, we can imagine it 10,000 years from now or, or 100 or 1,000 years from now, we are having rapid developments. I think we will have more. and. Uh, uh, let's hope for, that we move uh, faster than we think into the beyond NISC era. Thank you.